A portion of this video is sponsored by Surfshark. Cell towers. Over the past 30 years, they've become so commonplace, you probably don't even see them anymore. But without them, your smartphone is basically just a glorified Wi-Fi tablet. In past videos, I've shown you how cell sites can be hidden in plain sight in places like church steeples, or built to withstand the worst weather in North America at the top of a mountain. Today, I'm going to show you how a cell tower can be packed into a suitcase, and how doing so can help save lives. Okay, to understand why the Sonim Rapid Deployment Kit exists, you first need to understand why FirstNet was formed. And the clearest way to do that is to revisit one of the darkest days in the history of the city of Boston. In the immediate aftermath of the Boston Marathon bombing of 2013, it was nearly impossible to make a phone call in downtown Boston. Speculation ran rampant that the police or the wireless carriers had turned off the networks to foil any additional phone-triggered bombs themselves, but that's not what happened. The cellular networks were just overloaded by the sheer number of people trying to connect all at once. The resulting loss of communications made life harder, not just for ordinary folks, but for emergency workers as well. This problem and problems like it facing emergency communications were recognized well before the marathon bombing, of course. In fact, the first net authority had been established the year before, but it took until 2017 for that agency to finalize a partnership with AT&T to build a nationwide network in the 700 megahertz band dedicated to first responders. In exchange for the $40 billion, 25-year job of deploying and maintaining the network, AT&T gets to offer that same 700 megahertz spectrum to its regular customers. But here's the key. When an emergency arises and first responders need to communicate during a capacity crunch, those regular customers can be removed from the network to make room for those emergency communications. FirstNet calls this ruthless preemption, which uh, is coincidentally the name of the band I'm going to form when I finally get tired of this YouTube thing. Now, all that's well and good for situations where the networks are overloaded, but what happens when it's not just a capacity problem? The September 11th terrorist attacks, Gulf Coast hurricanes, wildfires in the western U.S., tornadoes, sometimes the cellular network is disabled, destroyed, or just plain absent. That's where the Rapid Deployment Kit comes in. And to see how it works, I wanted to travel to an area with no cellular reception. So I picked up an RDK3 loaner unit from my first net friends in New York City, picked up a couple YouTuber friends in the process, and then drove 112 miles to the very end of Long Island to see if I could make a connection without a cellular network. The results after a quick word from my sponsor. I'm not traveling as much as I have in years past, but I'm still using today's sponsor just as often. While Surfshark VPN is great for safely browsing on a public hotspot, it's also a powerful tool for preserving your privacy at home. Look, I make my living thanks to the advertising that goes alongside my content, but some ads come with an uninvited guest, malicious software. Surfshark helps fight that malware, and it also hides your IP address, which makes it tougher for bad actors to target you. If you think your internet service provider might be throttling your speeds based on usage, Surfshark can help level the playing field. And it works on your computer, tablet, and your phone. Try Surfshark now at the link below and use promo code MrMobile. You'll get 83% off a year's subscription and three extra months free. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Montauk Point, home to one of the nation's oldest lighthouses, a thoroughly creepy abandoned Air Force station, and very limited cellular coverage. If you're thinking this place seems eerily familiar, it's not just the Stranger Things vibes, it's also the setting I used to test the Samsung Galaxy Note 20's camera with my two David friends a few weeks back. Thanks for watching. With the David's assistance, I freed the rapid deployment kit from its zip car confines and uh, immediately realized I needed to work on my first responder muscle mass. I now fully understand the weight of my responsibility. Yeah, the RDK is a heavy piece of kit at 27 pounds. Which really should be no surprise, given everything packed inside its dust and water-resistant casing. A 205-watt-hour power reserve, that's about two good-sized laptop batteries, powers the whole thing for a worst-case endurance of four hours of very heavy use. And you can parcel that power out to other devices and these built-in charging cradles. 
They're custom designed for the four Sonim XP8 smartphones that live in their own dedicated locker within the RDK. Now, these aren't going to win any awards for software updates. I think these devices were still running Android 8.1, albeit with a May 2020 security patch. But they're made for durability, not cutting-edge features. And what's more, you don't have to use them to use FirstNet. Tons of devices are compatible, you just need a special SIM to make most of them work. And the RDK is even more universal. You can connect any device with a Wi-Fi radio to it, up to a maximum of 56. Now, of course, that Wi-Fi link is useless without a connection to the internet. But remember, we're assuming the cellular network is as dead as this decrepit radar dish. So I'm connecting the RDK to this other piece of gear called a BGAN terminal, in this case, the Cobham Explorer 710. Think of this as a more compact version of the satellite dishes you see on some rooftops. There's a SIM card in this. Cool. Only nerds will understand. <laughs> In a place like Montauk, you deploy it at about a 45-degree angle and point it toward the southeastern sky until that intermittent beeping you hear becomes a solid tone. It's kind of like Top Gun. That tone means the Explorer has a connection to one of Inmarsat's geostationary satellites, about 22,000 miles above the Earth's surface. And once that connection is live, the Explorer itself will kick out a Wi-Fi network that you can connect to directly or you can use an Ethernet cable to connect it to the RDK so you can share that signal across a wider area. Now, how wide an area? See how far we can take it. Just to come check there, uh, Alpha 2, I'm uh, taking a little walk away from the RDK, so I wanted to make sure I still had a connection to you. Are you loud and clear? We're actually uh, almost back to the parking lot. Well, that's good news, because I guess someone should be watching our sh**. Um. Okay, that was 173 paces, which a quick Google informs me, a pace is 2.5 feet about, so about 430 feet. Call it 400 feet to loss of signal. Not too bad, considering it's happening over Wi-Fi. As for speeds? Well, remember, this is for emergency situations in dire circumstances, not for playing Star Wars squadrons while camping. I was told to expect speeds a little shy of 500 kbps, and while that makes loading heavy websites pretty pokey, it's plenty for the kind of voice communication that's most critical in emergency situations. If you're thinking a 430-foot bubble with half a megabit data speeds doesn't seem very far or very fast, especially for the $20,000 or so of equipment we've got here, well, I said the same thing. And the FirstNet folks reminded me that the RDK is just one piece of a larger puzzle. If you need a mobile command center in the wake of a tornado or wildfire, this could be a good solution. But if you need to cast a wider net, a better fit would be what's called a cell on wheels, cow, or a cell on light truck, colt. Literally, trucks with extendable cell towers, a fleet of which AT&T makes available to public safety. AT&T is even building drone cell sites to provide coverage to even less accessible areas. Technically, they're called cells on wings, but I prefer their nickname, Flying Cows. I've barely scratched the surface of FirstNet broadly, and the RDK specifically, but in a year as full of challenges as 2020 has been, I'm glad I got to spend a small slice of Techtober talking about technology that's designed to keep people connected in the worst of times. This video was made possible by equipment loans from FirstNet, Sonam Technologies, and Cobham, with in-depth briefings from Sonam, Inmarsat, and AT&T. No compensation was provided for this content, though, and no company was given copy approval or an early look at this video. Please subscribe to The Mr. Mobile if you'd like to see more videos like this on YouTube, and leave a comment below if you'd like me to check out a flying cow if I get the opportunity. Until next time, thanks for watching, and please stay safe and mask up while you stay mobile, my friends.